This morning on CBS 2 News, a suspect in custody after a shooting at a 4th of July celebration. What we know about the nation's 309th mass shooting this year. Plus a shooting in Akron, Ohio, reigniting protests over police's use of force. A look at the damage done in Portland overnight. And a look at last night's 4th of July celebration here in the Treasure Valley and the festivities to come later this week. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Welcome to CBS 2 News This Morning, a live look of downtown Boise on this July 5th. 2022. Yeah, everything a lot quieter than it was just hours ago, but we are waking up this morning to clear skies. It's feeling very nice out the, the door this morning, but yeah, hotter temperatures are on the way. Good morning, Marcos. Good morning, Sarah. Yeah, that's right. Clear skies, warmer temperatures on the way. So yesterday we had that nice 80s today getting up into the 90s. Here's our live shot right now. This is 62 degrees southeast winds at six miles an hour. As I said, we are going to be warming up. Here's a look at some of the current temperatures across the valley. 57 Nampa, Ontario. There's 63 Mountain Home 62 for those of you starting your morning early. And here's a uh, look at that uh, starting the day forecast for today 62 by 6 a.m. 62 by 7 a.m. and 65 by 8 a.m. today. So I'm going to show you our Amanak today real quickly. Normal for this time of year, 90 degrees. As I said, we are going to be getting into about 93 degrees today. So a couple degrees uh, warmer than what's considered normal. Here's a look at some of our highs for today. 92 out in Emmett, uh, Boise there at 91, 92 Mountain Home and Caldwell there at 91. Going to show you a quick dog walking forecast, partly cloudy, cooler, and that sunrise at 6.09 a.m. this morning. It's going to be a warm day, Sarah. Yeah, just an hour away from that sunrise. Thank you, Marco. CBS 2 News and Newstock KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. A live look out there this morning. Yeah, seeing a few more headlights out there than we did just 24 hours ago. Everything looking good, both on our main roads and secondary roads. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on Newstalk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. Well, police say a person of interest is in custody after Monday's mass shooting at a 4th of July parade in a Chicago suburb. At least six people were killed, 30 injured. CBS News correspondent Bradley Blackbird is in Highland Park, Illinois this morning with the latest on the nation's 309th mass shooting of the year. Highland Park police say the gunman opened fire from a rooftop, spraying bullets onto the crowd below as people watched an Independence Day parade. I remember hearing shootings and going like, that's and then reloading and then again, and people screaming and running. All I thought about is just, you know, getting my daughter to safety and I ran with her. Close to nine hours later, police took a person of interest, Robert Cremo III, into custody. Officials said his vehicle was spotted and he was stopped after a brief chase. Subject was taken into custody without incident. This individual uh, is believed to have been responsible for what happened. They processed a significant amount of uh, digital evidence today, which uh, helped uh, lead investigators uh, in this direction. Police believe the gunman used a high powered rifle to fire from a spot on top of a commercial building here along the parade route. They say he was very difficult to see. I saw a man with had a shot in his back and saw a man on the floor bleeding and another person shot. This man who brought his five year old son to the parade in this Chicago suburb initially thought the July 4th gunfire was a Navy gun salute until he saw people running and the horror unfolding. You feel like you're just going to get shot when you're running away and it's just horrible to see all that terror. Investigators recovered a firearm at the scene. Authorities say five adults died there. One victim died at the hospital. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, Highland Park, Illinois. And that does bring us to today's number of the day, which is nearly half. 47% of voters think the publicity given to the perpetrators of mass shooting encourages others to commit similar copycat shootings. Now, the Scott Marasmussen National Survey finds a similar percentage. They believe media outlets should voluntarily agree to never publish or release the name of a mass shooter. Well, police in Philadelphia are looking for a suspect after two police officers were shot. The officers, they were working security for a 4th of July event when they were hit just as fireworks were getting underway. 
You know, we don't know. At this point, it's still too early to tell. We don't know if this was a ricochet from celebratory gunfire. We don't know if this was intentional. Uh, we don't know if this was someone taking a shot intentionally at these officers from uh, long range. Um, but again, like I said, uh, I, we're, we're all just extremely grateful that this wasn't worse than what it was. Uh, and all of these officers that you see standing around us, we're, we're on it. And we're not going to rest until we get someone in custody for this. The officers are in the hospital this morning. One of them hit in the shoulder. The other had a bullet graze his head. Both do appear to be OK and are expected to survive. Well, a former Boise State football player is dead. Four others injured after a shooting outside a Sacramento nightclub. Greg Grimes was 31 years old. He was a teaching assistant and or a teacher and an assistant football coach. He played defensive line for the Broncos from 09 to 2012. Now, the other victims haven't yet been identified. Their condition remains unknown this morning. Police are asking eyewitnesses to come forward with any possible leads. Now, head coach Andy Avalos says, quote, I and the entire Boise State football family are saddened to learn about the passing of Greg Grimes. I was fortunate to coach him during his senior season. He was a member of the Brotherhood who has gone way too soon. He will be missed. Well, a curfew was in effect overnight in Akron, Ohio, after police released videos showing an officer involved shooting. Now that deadly shooting of 25 year old Jalen Walker, it ignited protests Sunday night. A medical examiner says he had 60 bullet wounds in his body. Now Walker ran away from a traffic stop and reportedly shot at police during a car chase. Well, back here on the West Coast, dozens of demonstrators gathered in downtown Portland overnight, smashing windows, shooting off mortars into the federal building and burning American flags in a protest over the death of Jalen Walker in Ohio. It was labeled a quote direct action march. Now the same term used in previous demonstrations that did turn destructive. The CBS station in Portland, it does report a security guard at a hotel downtown was attacked and someone did get pepper sprayed. Well, people across the nation, some skipped the 4th of July celebrations, instead rallying for abortion rights. Now in San Francisco, California, protesters say they don't feel very patriotic or celebratory. I think that this day represents less independence for women in the United States of America. It's heartbreaking to me that women who are younger than me will not have the same rights that I had. In downtown Sacramento, dozens of protesters disrupted traffic for several hours. Police eventually moved the crowds off the interstate. Well, a similar site in Seattle, Washington, where organizers say they're pressuring the federal government into restoring legal abortion nationwide. That was a constitutional right through the Roe v. Wade decision for nearly 50 years, but it was undone late last month by the Supreme Court. Well, meantime, in Seattle, some new Americans, they're celebrating their independence. Now, nearly 300 people from 74 countries are now officially U.S. citizens. Congratulations. How are you feeling on this day? Uh, today, that's a wonderful day, amazing day. I don't know how to describe it. Trust me, everyone, amazing, wonderful. Many at the same event say they were waiting years to become Americans. Now, the naturalization ceremony at the Seattle Center was live in person for the first time since the pandemic. Here in the Treasure Valley, 4th of July celebrations were in full swing last night. The hometown Boise Hawks played the Missoula Paddleheads. The score 4-7 to seven with the Boise Hawks losing. Now, some good news, though. The game did end with some stunning fireworks. And 4th of July festivities were in full swing yesterday at Ann Morrison Park. Hundreds of people came to watch the fireworks celebration. A little bit of river, a little bit of barbecue in the afternoon, mm -hmm. enjoying our friends and family, enjoying the fourth. Yeah, a little best of both worlds. Now, if you want to see more pictures of the show, we do have a full photo gallery. You can find that. Just head to IdahoNews.com. And in Star, a hometown celebration parade was held, one of the largest the city has ever seen. We've been to the, the Star Hometown Parade for quite a few years, and so we were very surprised and very excited about how big and how exciting that it was this year. It was a chance for many locals to get out and celebrate. All sorts of groups were featured in the parade, including classic cars, people on horseback, and of course, your classic parade floats. The city also held a fireworks show overnight.
And the Independence Day celebrations, they aren't over just yet. In Eagle, the annual Eagle Fun Days, that takes place this weekend. That's July 8th and 9th. There'll be plenty of activities to choose from. Friday night is Family Fun Night at Gerber Park. Well, at Eagle Island Park that same night, there's a fireworks show. That's from 1030 to 11. The next day, Saturday, there'll be a fun run, a market, live music, a car show, a parade, a cornhole tournament, and even a Rocky Mountain oyster feed. Cornhole looks really fun, Sarah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have a friend that makes um, specialized cornhole boards, actually. Shout out to him. But it's a really fun game to yeah. play, no matter what. As long as you're outside enjoying, you know, the sunshine, yes. I yeah. could really honestly be playing it. I used to play that in college all the time. So. Yeah? Were you good at it? No. No. <laughs> no. Really good, I like the honesty, though. Yeah. I, can, I can appreciate, you know, someone who knows their, <laughs> their limitations. Okay, well, today it's going to be hotter. We're looking at continuing to warm up throughout the week. So heading out the door this morning, very mild, but how quick is it going to be? Mild, but warming trend, definitely. Uh, a, a nice kind of bouncing back to that summer weather we saw last okay. week. You know, here's that. Uh, temperatures are going to get into the 90s for this afternoon and the 90s. Uh, tomorrow as well. Here's a look at that out that door forecast this morning. If you are going to be starting your day early 66 at 9 a.m. this morning by 11 a.m. into the 70s before we get into the 80s by 1 p.m. right there at 87 by 3 p.m. And as I said, that 90s this afternoon. So this is going to be warmer out there. Here's a look at some of the current temperatures out there right now. Meridian there at 63, 57 in Nampa, 61 there in Caldwell. And looking at some other areas across the valley, uh, 64 Glens Ferry and 44 out in Baker City. Now, uh, taking a look at those uh, temperature trends, as I did mention, 91 for today. But getting into that mid 90s for the rest of the week before we get see a little cool down on Saturday, still 90 degrees, though normal temperatures for this time of year. And here's our look at some of your low temperatures for tonight. 56 Sun Valley, 64 there in Boise, Caldwell there at 62. So nice mild conditions and going to uh, talk a little bit about the wildfire risk. We are very high. Uh, <clears throat> did some fireworks yesterday, but you know, use caution for any sort of campfires, burning, all that good stuff. But looking at our feature cast, nice dry conditions. We are going to see some instability for tonight and into tomorrow. May see a sprinkle or two in the area by Wednesday afternoon, but overall it's going to be warmer temperatures, Sarah. With that, thank you, Marcos. It is 512 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Everything is looking good out there. A few more headlights, but everything running smoothly, just like we like on your Tuesday. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, NATO accepting some new members what it means for our alliance with those overseas and the future for the war in Ukraine. Plus, thousands of flights canceled over the holiday weekend, the travel trouble that's keeping people grounded. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. On a busy weekend, Grand Canyon Park Rangers may treat up to three dozen bites from this animal. The answer, squirrels. Yep. Guess that right off the bat. Be careful out there, guys. Lots of squirrels. You don't want to get bit. Okay, today's question. You're most likely to do this at 6 o'clock p.m. than any other time during the day. Okay, folks, thinking caps on. What do you think it is? Here's a look at your local forecast out in Payette for today. Partly cloudy conditions, high of 91. Partly cloudy skies for tonight with a high of 61. And tomorrow, warming up into the mid-90s, partly cloudy conditions. Thank you, Marcos. 515 on your Tuesday. It could be the biggest expansion of a U.S. alliance in decades. And it could help deter attacks on the U.S. and other member countries. Now, Amy Kiley reports on what's happening in NATO today and what's happening in Ukraine. That makes it so important. This week, the U.S. is celebrating independence and alliances. Sweden and Finland joining NATO is so important. The potential now accession of Sweden and Finland, which will change the alliance uh, forever. Today, the U.S. and its NATO allies signing what are called accession protocols. Those set up ratification procedures to accept two new member countries. That's a big deal. It sets up possibly the most significant change to the U.S. alliance in decades. 
two new NATO allies with formidable military force and capabilities. The timing is important because of Russia's war in Ukraine. I think everyone's very concerned about their the potential for future aggression. Russia has just taken control of much of eastern Ukraine as it continues westward attacks. Russians are shooting over 50 missiles a day, targeting different Ukrainian cities. NATO allies vow to defend each other against foreign attack, so more members means more protection for the U.S. and other member countries. Just yesterday, that strength in numbers was a point of emphasis when a U.S. Army general became NATO's supreme allied commander, Europe. We will march together into a beautiful future of peace and prosperity for all of us. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Well, Sweden is already signaling it welcome further additions to NATO, such as Ukraine. And that does bring us to the latest. Russia's war in Ukraine being blamed for rising prices here in the U.S., but the national average for a gallon of gas is slowly declining nationwide. The national average now sitting at 480 a gallon. Idaho's average, however, still sitting at 525 a gallon. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up, that's either going to be the Maverick Station on South Cloverdale Road in Boise, or the Costco station on Chinden in Meridian, or the Walmart on Overland Road. It lists them all at about 518 a gallon. Well, thousands of flights were canceled across the United States over the 4th of July weekend. The Associated Press reports that more than 2,200 flights were canceled from Thursday to Monday afternoon. Now, another 25,000 were delayed just during that time. Some delays were due to weather, others due to airline staffing issues. Meantime, the TSA says more than 9 million people traveled through the U.S. airports between Thursday and Sunday. And with that, you're taking a live look at the Boise Airport this morning. If you are planning to fly back home after the 4th of July celebrations this morning, we've got you covered. Here's a look at BOI's flight status is right now. Everything is looking good, both arrivals and departures on time. We'll have another update for you in the next hour. Yeah, no matter which way you're getting back, it was a beautiful view. And Marcos, you were able to stay up last night and be able to see some of those fireworks. So I was in bed. I had, you know, um, my earplugs in. I had two box fans on either side of me trying to, you know, be able to get through it. But how, how was it? Very beautiful. I mean, we, you know, at Boise puts on a really good fireworks show. Yeah. So, uh, and Morrison Park, nice view. Uh, the fireworks lasted a good 15, 20 minutes. So oh, yeah. really, really, really nice night. See, and the temperatures were nice, yeah, 80s, okay. so. A little cooler, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Yesterday was picture perfect. I don't know about you though, many people still out on the river. I know today yes. they're going to be excited for that warm up and the weekend to come. Yeah, yeah. that's right. I mean, yesterday, you know, nice 80, a little lower than average, right? But today getting back up into those 90s, um, mid, uh, mid 90s by tomorrow. So getting back to that more summer like weather. This is a live shot right now, 62 degrees for those of you starting out your morning. Uh, southeast winds at six miles an hour. And take a look at some current temperatures right now across the valley 59 in Nampa, 63 Meridian there, Caldwell there at 61. And looking at some temperatures across uh, Ontario, there are 63, Baker City 44. So nice mild conditions currently right now. Now I'm going to show you these toasty temperatures uh, forecast, as I said, 91 for today, getting into that mid 90s throughout the rest of the week and 92 on Saturday. So more normal summer like conditions going to be good. Good week to go float the river. Good week to kind of be out and about um, enjoying that sunshine. So looking at our future cast for today, nice dry conditions. We are going to be seeing some instability over the next couple days, possibility of a shower or two Wednesday afternoon in the valley, but overall going to be a nice dry week and we're going to be seeing uh, nice warm like conditions. So here's what to expect warming up back in the 90s for today. Those mountain showers and some of that instability causing those showers to kind of uh, come out. So looking at that extended forecast for the Treasure Valley, 91 for today, partly cloudy, that warmer weather for Wednesday, Thursday, and then that 93 sunny on Friday and sunny conditions throughout the weekend before we kind of get back into the upper 80s by Sunday. But overall, it's going to be a nice warm summer week, Sarah. Yeah, Wednesday into Thursday, looking very balmy. All right, 521 
on your Tuesday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Everything is running smoothly out there this morning. Love to see that. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI at 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, a study shedding light on obesity in the U.S. How many kids are overweight compared to kids just 12 years ago? Plus, more monkeypox vaccines being sent to the states. Why the rise in cases has officials asking for the White House to do more. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. 524 on your Tuesday, U.S. breakfast food giant Kellogg lost its legal battle in Britain. Now, Kellogg tried to block new anti-obesity measures banning the promotion of sugary cereals. Now, the rules are set to take effect in October. A high court judge rejected the company's argument that regulators don't consider the nutritional value of milk added to the cereal. Well, a new study suggests children are heavier than they were in the last decade. Researchers say the percentage of kindergartners considered obese, it's jumped. Research followed, researchers followed two groups of children. The first started kindergarten in 1998, the second group in 2010. They tracked the height and weight measurements through fifth grade. At every age, more children in the 2010 group were considered obese. Well, as cases of the monkeypox virus steadily rise in the United States, health officials are pushing for more access to testing and vaccines. Now, Mary Maloney shares how the Biden administration is getting vaccines to states with higher case rates. More doses of the monkeypox vaccine are being sent to states that are dealing with an influx of the virus. In order to beef up their response and under pressure from the states, the Biden administration is releasing the extra doses of the vaccine from the strategic national stockpile, along with more tests. The current distribution plan has been criticized because of its limited scope, with vaccines only available to those with known exposure. Under the new plan, vaccines and tests will be allocated to states based on case rate, focusing on men who have sex with men and their known partners, along with anyone who thinks they might have been recently exposed through an anonymous partner. The U.S. has confirmed more than 350 cases so far. While experts expect the virus is more widespread than the current case count suggests, they are not calling it crisis yet. I think it would be risky to classify it as low, medium or high. Given the numbers, I would not say right now at this particular point that it is a, quote, high risk. But the numbers may increase, which means we've just got to be careful and pay attention. Still to come on CBS 2 News, a shooting in California leaves a former Boise State football player dead. What we know about the incident this morning. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. We have a three hour block of FBI as well as FBI Most Wanted at 9 o'clock. Then you can join Brent Hunsaker, Janae Ryan and Roland Stedham for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. You're more likely to do this at 6 o'clock p.m. than any other time during the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, a suspect in custody after a shooting at a 4th of July celebration. What we know about the nation's 309th mass shooting this year. Plus, a police shooting in Ohio reignites protests over police use of force. A look at the damage done overnight in Portland. Plus, a look at last night's 4th of July celebrations here in the Treasure Valley and the festivities to come later this week. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now.
Well, good morning and happy Tuesday. Here's a live look right now. Downtown 62 degrees southeast winds at six miles an hour. We're in for a warm up today, folks. Here's a look at some of your current temperatures across the valley. 59 Nampa, 63 there in Ontario and Mountain Home there at 62 degrees. Looking at the start in the day forecast today, going to stay in the 60s for this morning, uh, 62 by 7 a.m. and then 65 by 8 a.m. But as I said, we are going to see that warming trend. Here's a look at our almanac for this time of year 90 and low in uh, 59 but on record there 106 back in 1896 so going to be staying a couple degrees above that normal uh, look at our high temperatures for today 92 mountain home 91 nampa 78 there in mccall and emmett there at 92 boise there at 91 taking a quick look at that dog walking forecast 60 to 70 this morning partly cloudy cooler conditions and that sunrise happening at 6.09 a.m. Sarah. Thank you, Marcos. It is 531 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Looking good out there. Not much to talk about. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 6.70 a.m. or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, police say a person of interest is in custody after Monday's mass shooting at a 4th of July parade in a Chicago suburb. At least six people were killed, 30 injured. CBS News correspondent Bradley Blackburn is in Highland Park, Illinois this morning with the latest on the nation's 309th shooting of the year. Highland Park police say the gunman opened fire from a rooftop, spraying bullets onto the crowd below as people watched an Independence Day parade. I remember hearing shootings and going like, that's and then reloading and then again, and people screaming and running. All I thought about is just, you know, getting my daughter to safety and I ran with her. Close to nine hours later, police took a person of interest, Robert Cremo III, into custody. Officials said his vehicle was spotted and he was stopped after a brief chase. Subject was taken into custody without incident. This individual uh, is believed to have been responsible for what happened. They processed a significant amount of uh, digital evidence today, which uh, helped uh, lead investigators uh, in this direction. Police believe the gunman used a high powered rifle to fire from a spot on top of a commercial building here along the parade route. They say he was very difficult to see. I saw a man with had a shot in his back and saw a man on the floor bleeding and another person shot. This man who brought his five year old son to the parade in this Chicago suburb initially thought the July 4th gunfire was a Navy gun salute until he saw people running and the horror unfolding. You feel like you're just going to get shot when you're running away and it's just horrible to see all that terror. Investigators recovered a firearm at the scene. Authorities say five adults died there. One victim died at the hospital. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, Highland Park, Illinois. In the meantime, police in Philadelphia, they're looking for a suspect after two police officers were shot. Now, the officers were working security for a 4th of July event. They were hit just as fireworks were getting underway. You know what? We don't know. At this point, it's still too early to tell. We don't know if this was a ricochet from celebratory gunfire. We don't know if this was intentional. Uh, we don't know if this was someone taking a shot intentionally at these officers from uh, long range. Um, but again, like I said, uh, I, we're, we're all just extremely grateful that this wasn't worse than what it was. Uh, and all of these officers that you see standing around us, we're, we're on it. And we're not going to rest until we get someone in custody for this issue. The Philadelphia officers are in the hospital. One of them hit in the shoulder. The other had a bullet graze his head. Now both do appear to be okay as of this morning. Well, a former Boise State football player is dead. Four others injured after a shooting outside a Sacramento nightclub. Greg Grimes was 31 years old. He was a teacher and an assistant football coach. He played defensive line for the Broncos from 09 to 2012. Now, the other victims haven't yet been identified. Their conditions do remain unknown. Police, they're asking eyewitnesses to come forward with any possible leads. In the meantime, head coach Andy Avalos says, quote, I and the entire Boise State football family are saddened to learn about the passing of Greg Grimes. I was fortunate to coach him during his summer, senior season. He was a member of the Brotherhood who has gone way too soon and he will be missed. Well, a curfew was in effect overnight in Akron, Ohio, after police released videos of the officer involved shooting. Now that shooting was of 25 year old Jalen Walker, 
That one ignited protests on Sunday night. A medical examiner says he had been hit with 60 bullet wounds in his body. Now Walker, he ran away from a traffic stop and reportedly shot at police during a car chase. Well, closer to home, dozens of demonstrators gathered in downtown Portland overnight, smashing windows and shooting off mortars into a federal building, also burning an American flag, all in protest over the death of Jalen Walker. Now, it was labeled a direct action march, the same term used in previous demonstrations that did turn destructive. The CBS station in Portland reports a security guard at a downtown hotel was attacked and someone got pepper sprayed. Well, some people across the nation skipped 4th of July celebrations, instead rallying for abortion rights. In San Francisco, California, protesters say they don't feel very patriotic or celebratory. I think that this day represents less independence for women in the United States of America. It's heartbreaking to me that women who are younger than me will not have the same rights that I had. In downtown Sacramento, dozens of demonstrators disrupted traffic for several hours. Police eventually moved the crowds off the interstate. Well, a similar site in Seattle, Washington yesterday, organizers say they're trying to pressure the federal government into restoring legal abortion nationwide. That was a constitutional right through the Roe v. Wade decision nearly 50 years ago, but was undone late last month by the Supreme Court. In the meantime, in Seattle, some new Americans were celebrating their independence. Nearly 300 people from 74 countries are now U.S. citizens. Congratulations. How are you feeling on this day? Uh, today, that's a wonderful day, amazing day. I don't know how to describe it. Trust me, everyone, amazing, wonderful. Many at the event say they were waiting for years to become Americans. Now, the naturalization ceremony at the Seattle Center was live and in person for the first time since the pandemic. Here in the Treasure Valley, 4th of July celebrations were in full swing last night. The hometown Boise Hawks played the Missoula Paddleheads. The score, 4-7 to seven, with the Boise Hawks losing. Some good news, though. The game ended with some stunning fireworks. And 4th of July festivities, again, in full swing at Ann Morrison yesterday night. Hundreds of people came to watch the fireworks celebration. A little bit of river, a little bit of barbecue in the afternoon, enjoying our friends and family, enjoying the 4th. If you want to see more pictures of the show, we have a full photo gallery. You can find that on IdahoNews.com. And in Star, a hometown celebration parade was held, one of the largest the city has ever seen. We have been to the, the Star Hometown Parade for quite a few years, and so we were very surprised and very excited about how big and how exciting that it was this year. It was a party. It was also a chance for locals to get out and celebrate. Now, all sorts of groups were featured in the parade. That includes our classic cars, people on horseback saying hey, and of course, your classic parade floats. The city, they also held a fireworks show overnight. And the Independence Day celebrations, they aren't over yet. In Eagle, the annual Eagle Fun Days takes place this weekend. That's July 8th and 9th. There'll be plenty of activities to choose from. Friday night is Family Fun Night at Gerber Park. At Eagle Island Park that same night, a fireworks show from 1030 to 11. The next day, Saturday, a fun run, a market with live music, a car show, a parade, a cornhole tournament, and a Rocky Mountain oyster feed. Not too bad. <laughs> it's like some fun activities there, Sarah. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Uh, there's so much going on this weekend, and yes. I know at least yesterday a little bit cooler, which I loved, by the way. So. Yes. Is it looking like we're staying in the 80s? I'd love if we could maybe keep that going. Unfortunately, no, but there's a lot of people who were, you know, asking for that. But no, yeah. warming into the 90s for today, okay. getting back to that more summer, uh, summer like temperature. Yeah that we normally see during this time of year, right? Average uh, average highs in the 90s, but it was a nice break yesterday, especially uh, being out in the fireworks uh, uh, late at night. But here's that out that door forecast for today. We're gonna be staying in the 60s for this morning, uh, warming up into the 70s by 11 a.m. and then getting up into the 80s by one before we get into the 90s by about this afternoon, uh, 90 is going to be getting about 92, 93. These are some of your current temperatures right now across the valley. 64 Meridian, 61 Caldwell there. And uh, looking out at uh, Mountain Homes there, 63 Baker City there, 44 degrees. So nice uh, mild temperatures for 
uh, this morning. Looking at uh, our temperature trends throughout the next couple days, going to be hitting the mid 90s on uh, beginning tomorrow. So going to be nice uh, floating temperatures. Uh, going to be out. Uh, Good day to get out and uh, enjoy that sunshine. So here are some of the, your lows for tonight. 64 there, Boise Caldwell there at 62 and Mountain Home there at 60. Going to talk about that wildfire risk. Obviously, you know, we're not going to be doing many fireworks from this point on, but uh, definitely use caution when burning any that campfires. We are at a very high wildfire risk and looking at our future cast, Staying fairly dry for the most part, we are going to see some instability over the next couple days. Some of those showers, scattered showers, thunderstorms for the mountain regions, and then a shower or two here for tomorrow afternoon. But staying mo mostly dry, highs in the 90s, going to be a nice week to get out and enjoy that nice summer-like uh, temperature, Sarah. Yeah, the Boise River calling my name this weekend. All right, it is 541 on your Tuesday. Seeing a little first light out there on I-84. Everything is looking good, running smoothly. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on Newstalk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And it is time for our question of the day. The question is, you're more likely to do this at 6 o'clock PM than any other time during the day. Marcos and I immediately said eat dinner, but uh, keep in mind, guys, we eat dinner at like four or five o'clock every day. We um, we definitely track with the older crowd when it comes to eating yes. earlier. <laughs> Supper by 4 p.m. See what else at four, six o'clock p.m. I mean, that's kind of the time where you're starting to wind down. You're getting home from work, turning on the TV, maybe. So maybe, maybe it's the time the when you watch TV Ooh, or gym, gym. Yeah, I know I was some say, people. you can go either way. You can go couch potato way, yes. which, I, which I sometimes go, or you can go to the gym. Or with this uh, nice is. weather, we've been having a nice afternoon walk. Oh, I mean, yes, that's uh, it's that's been perfect be overall. OK, Doug says making a post on Facebook. Yeah, people getting off work. Yeah scrolling through, getting updated on what's going on, what they missed during their work day. Let's see what else. Verlin says, have supper. I'm with I you, go, Verlin. Verlin. That's, that's yeah. about that perfect time. Yes, agree with you, Verlin. <laughs> yeah, all right. Joe says, drunk texting. <laughs> okay, maybe yesterday for 4th of July, 6 o'clock would have been acceptable. <laughs> maybe say that for judge. happy hour on a Friday night. Yeah, that's true. Actually, no, that is around texting. happy hour. Okay, nope, sounds good, guys. We have lots of guesses coming on in. If you think you know the answer, again, you can... Add that to our Facebook page or answer on Twitter. We'll read some more of your guesses coming up through the morning and reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS This Morning. And still to come on CBS 2 News This Morning, firefighters gaining control of several blazes across the state. A look at how fire season is progressing. Here's a look at your local forecast out in Ontario for today. Partly cloudy conditions with a high of 92 and then tonight partly cloudy that high of 65 and tomorrow partly cloudy 95 degrees. 545 as we turn to fire season, the Willow Fire burning in Eastern Oregon. It's now 90% contained the fire. It's burned more than 40,000 acres near Vail. The good news, though, no homes or buildings have been damaged. And this morning, the Talon Fire is fully contained. This is the fire that was burning near the Birds of Prey Center just southeast of Boise. The fire grew to about 60 acres, but thanks to quick work, the fire was quickly contained. Now crews are mopping up today. The cause is currently under investigation and a large fire burning in California. It's happening about 50 miles southeast of Sacramento. It's been dubbed the Electra fire that's now spread nearly 1000 acres. Now, as of last evening, it was 0% contained with evacuations are now in place. Melanie Wingo has more. The Electra fire burning in rural Amador County. Threatening homes, fire crews spent the afternoon working nonstop to protect. Helicopters filling up in nearby bodies of water. Swooping toward the flames, making drop after drop, working to stop the fire from progressing. Wind gusts kicking up the flames, causing them to move up canyon slopes. From this vantage point on top of a canyon, we're seeing why there's so much smoke in the sky. The fire down below is burning in thick vegetation. There's just so much dry fuel to burn. 
Utility crews doing what they can to prepare for the fire to sweep through. Engines on the ground standing by to protect homes at the top of the canyon from those oncoming flames. This happens almost every year here, <laughs> so it's, it's tradition. People who live in the fire's path forced to evacuate, but confident in the fire crews working to save their homes. At first it's a little scary, um, but firefighters seem, you know, like they're doing pretty good at it. Uh, they saved our house multiple times now, so I have faith in them. Now, as of this morning, it's still unclear how many structures have been impacted by that fire. Well, a home fire in Daly City, California, attracted more than just firefighters. Silas Valentine, perhaps the youngest firefighter recruit in the Bay Area, quickly jumped into action when he saw smoke. We saw the smoke and the flames from our house, and then Silas, of course, put on his outfit right away. Oh, I love this. All right, firefighters, they decided to take the opportunity to show the young boy around, hoping to encourage Silas and others like him to pursue firefighting. Love that. See, Smoke jumps and puts on his outfit, Such jumps into action. Story. Yeah. I did you ever want to be? Where, did, you ever, did you ever want to fight fire, sir? I don't know if I wanted to fight fires. I always did love fire, and I definitely believe in like you know keeping our forests where they're at. Let's not burn down things. But I don't know about firefighting. I had a lot of friends that were firefighters, so yeah. I saw really kind of the the. I mean, it's, it's a tough job. Intense, it's a very yeah. tough job. So I commend the, all those out there that uh, do it. But I love that Silas starting them young. Very cute. Great. Too very cute. Adorable. Okay, well, it is going to be very hot today. So maybe fire, not what we're going to want to talk about. Maybe a little bit more of um, some water, finding ways to cool off yeah. today is going to be the name of yeah, the Yeah, definitely stay cool over the next uh, really couple days. Yeah. I mean, uh, nice uh, 82 we had yesterday, 83. But getting back up into the 90s this week, this week folks, uh, here's our live shot. Right now, downtown Boise, those southeast winds at six miles an hour and uh, going to be nice and mild this morning. Here are some of your current temperatures, 63 there in Nampa, 60, uh, 64 there, Meridian Caldwell there at 61. So going to be a nice uh, mild forecast for those of you starting your morning right now. 64 there, Glens Ferry, Ontario there at 63. But as I said, we are going to be warming up. Here's a look at those temperature trends for today. 91 on Tuesday, 95 throughout the rest of the week. So a uh, nice week to kind of just get out there, you know, uh, float the river and do some of those outdoor activities. Looking at our uh, future cast, uh, dry for the most part. We are going to see some instability, some of that uh, scattered showers, thunderstorms in the mountain region. We may even see a shower or two tomorrow afternoon in the area as the system passes through our area. But overall, staying fairly dry and getting into those 90s nice uh, summer like conditions so here's what we could expect warming up back in the 90s for today those mountain showers and some of that instability but here's a look at that extended forecast partly cloudy for today 91 94 for uh, mid 90s for throughout the rest of the week really and that sunshine continuing throughout the weekend so folks get out there you know head to the boise river stay cool get that sunscreen and stay hydrated those summer conditions are sticking around for a while sarah yeah no triple digits i do like that but again if you have loved ones make sure their ac is serviced ready to go again we are looking at continuing to heat up as we head further into the summer but cbs 2 news and news kboi bring you team traffic all morning long here's a live look this morning everything looking good so we will move it on along when you do get in the car make sure you turn on news talk kboi that is 670 a.m or 93.1 fm for all our team traffic updates and still to come on CBS 2 News celebrating more than the 4th of July. A look at the festivities underway that celebrate the 100th birthday of this World War II Fed. And here's a look at our chime in photo of the day from Jesus. Looks like fun out there at Whitewater Park. Ah, oh, just makes you want to jump on in. Something we're seeing a lot more of with this summer heat. Thank you so much for sharing with us to submit your photos. You can head to IdahoNews.com slash chime in. This is CBS 2 News this morning. 553 on your Tuesday. Welcome back across the U.S. Americans shot off fireworks to celebrate the 4th of July. Here's a look at some of the celebrations in Las Vegas. Caesars Palace kicked off the 4th of July fireworks for the Vegas area. It's in the heart of the Strip this year. Nearly everyone on the Las Vegas Boulevard was able to see the show.
And professionals at the Rose Bowl in California put on some real dazzling displays. They celebrated all day long, enjoying food, fun, and then this massive fireworks show. Well, some in Tulsa, Oklahoma are celebrating a bit more than just Independence Day. Three generations of family members got together to celebrate the 100th birthday of a World War II veteran. Now, Amy Slanschik checks in on this festivity. Take a look. Clyde Julian Case has shared his birthday with America for a full century, seeing 18 presidents in his lifetime and today surrounded by three generations of his family. <laughs> Today is a huge celebration of 100 years of life. Born on the 4th of July, it's time to celebrate Clyde Case. Typically, we would have a 4th of July red with the sparklers and all that, but this is just a wonderful uh, tribute to his 100 years. <laughs> For just about five of those years, Clyde served in World War II. His daughter, Suzanne, recalls the war stories he told over the years, how he joined the Army Air Corps in 1941 before Pearl Harbor. He served in England and the Panama Canal Zone, finishing his service in 1945 as a top turret gunner on the B-24. These are his goggles and his flight helmet and his military hat treasures. We will treasure those. While his past was on display at his birthday party, Mr. Case, I want to give you this. Family and friends got to make new memories. As Clyde opened cards, reading notes from family and friends, and unwrapped presents. <gasps> Look at that. Home of the brave. But perhaps the greatest gift. You are a big baby was meeting his great-granddaughter, Halston Julian, for the first time. His youngest great-grandchild. Mom Melissa and Dad Julian welcomed Halston into the world just three weeks ago. Now she'll carry on her great-grandfather's middle name. It's just amazing that they could have that moment, you know. Those pictures will be something that she doesn't realize but will cherish forever. Happy birthday! He's going strong and um, we're celebrating that three generations together celebrating the greatest one of all and many more oh, happy birthday Clyde still to come on CBS 2 News a shooting in California leaves a former Boise State football player dead what we know this morning and an update on NATO that and much more ahead Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, a suspect in custody after a shooting at a 4th of July celebration. What we know about the nation's 309th mass shooting this year. Plus, a police shooting in Ohio reigniting protests over police use of force. A look at the damage done in Portland overnight. And a look at last night's 4th of July celebrations here in the Treasure Valley and the festivities to come later this week. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning and thank you for joining us. This is a live look of downtown Boise on this July 5th, 2022. More cloud cover moving in for our morning, but a warm up headed our way. Good morning to you, Marcos. What can we expect? Well, good morning, Sarah. Yeah, uh, clear conditions, calm conditions for right now, but a warm up is going to be in store for us starting today. So I'm going to start out by showing you this is our live shot. Calm winds out there. A nice start to your morning commute. Feels like 63 degrees out there. And I'm going to show you some of our current temperatures across the valley right now. 57 out there in Nampa, 60 there in Ontario, and 62 for our friends down in Mountain Home. Looking at our uh, morning forecast, nice mild conditions throughout the 60s for this morning morning 62 there by 7 a.m. Uh, 64 there by 8 a.m. Nice 
cloudy conditions for this morning. I'm going to show you our almanac real quickly. Normal for this time of year, 90 degrees. Yesterday we had that nice high of 82 degrees, but going to be warming into about 92, 93 degrees for today. Here's our high temperatures for today. Nampa there, 91. Boise there, 91. And Mountain Home there in the 90s as well. Going to show you our dog walking forecast. Partly cloudy, the cooler conditions for today. That sunrise happening at 6.09 a.m. Sarah? Ooh, that looks perfect. 601 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and Newstock KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Not much to talk about this morning. It is looking good. Everything running smoothly. When you get in the car, turn on Newstock KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Police, they say a person of interest is in custody after Monday's mass shooting at a 4th of July parade in a Chicago suburb. At least six people were killed. 30 injured. CBS News correspondent Bradley Blackburn is in Highland Park, Illinois this morning with the latest on the nation's 309th mass shooting of the year. Highland Park police say the gunman opened fire from a rooftop, spraying bullets onto the crowd below as people watched an Independence Day parade. I remember hearing shootings and going like that's and then reloading and then again and people screaming and running. All I thought about is just you know, getting my daughter to safety and I ran with her. Close to nine hours later, police took a person of interest, Robert Cremo III, into custody. Officials said his vehicle was spotted and he was stopped after a brief chase. Subject was taken into custody without incident. This individual uh, is believed to have been responsible for what happened. They processed a significant amount of uh, digital evidence today, which uh, helped uh, lead investigators uh, in this direction. Police believe the gunman used a high powered rifle to fire from a spot on top of a commercial building here along the parade route. They say he was very difficult to see. And we saw a man that had a shot in his back and saw a man on the floor bleeding and another person shot. This man who brought his five year old son to the parade in this Chicago suburb initially thought the July 4th gunfire was a Navy gun salute until he saw people running and the horror unfolding. You feel like you're just going to get shot when you're running away and it's just horrible to see all that terror. Investigators recovered a firearm at the scene. Authorities say five adults died there. One victim died at the hospital. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, Highland Park, Illinois. And that brings us to today's number of the day, which is nearly half. 47% of voters think the publicity given to the perpetrators of mass shootings encourages others to commit similar copycat shootings. Now, the Scott Rasmussen National Survey finds a similar percentage believe media outlets should voluntarily agree to never publish or release the name of a mass shooter. Well, police in Philadelphia are looking for a suspect after two police officers were shot. Now, the officers, they were working security for a 4th of July event when they were hit just as the fireworks were getting underway. You know what? We don't know. At this point, it's still too early to tell. We don't know if this was a ricochet from celebratory gunfire. We don't know if this was intentional. Uh, we don't know if this was someone taking a shot intentionally at these officers from uh, long range. Um, but again, like I said, uh, I, we're, we're all just extremely grateful that this wasn't worse than what it was. Uh, and all of these officers that you see standing around us, we're, we're on it. And we're not going to rest until we get someone in custody for this. The officers are in the hospital this morning. One of them hit in the shoulder. The other had a bullet graze his head. Both do appear to be okay and are expected to survive. Well, a former Boise State football player is dead. Four others injured after a shooting outside a Sacramento nightclub. Greg Grimes was 31 years old, a teacher and an assistant football coach. He played defensive line for the Broncos from 09 to 2012. The other victims, they haven't been identified yet and their conditions remain unknown. Police, they're asking eyewitnesses to come forward with any possible leads. In the meantime, head coach Andy Avalos says, quote, I and the other and the entire Boise State football family are saddened to learn about the passing of Greg Grimes. I was fortunate to coach him during his senior season. He was a member of the Brotherhood who has gone way too soon and he will be missed. Well, a curfew in effect overnight for Akron, Ohio, after police released video showing the officer involved shooting. That deadly shooting of 25 year old Jalen Walker ignited protests Sunday night. A medical examiner says he had 60 bullet wounds in his body. 
Now Walker ran from a traffic stop and reportedly shot at police during a car chase. Well, back here on the West Coast, dozens of demonstrators gathered in downtown Portland overnight, smashing windows and shooting off mortars into a federal building and burning an American flag, all in protest over the death of Jalen Walker in Ohio. It was labeled as a direct action march, the same term used in previous demonstrations that did turn destructive. The CBS station in Portland reports a security guard at a hotel downtown was attacked and someone did get pepper sprayed. Well, in the meantime, in Seattle, some new Americans were celebrating their independence yesterday. Nearly 300 people from 74 countries are now U.S. citizens. Congratulations. How are you feeling on this day? Uh, today, that's a wonderful day, amazing day. I don't know how to describe it. Trust me, everyone, amazing, wonderful. Many at the event say they've been waiting years to become Americans. The naturalization ceremony at the Seattle Center it was live and in person for the first time since the pandemic. Here in the Treasure Valley, 4th of July celebrations were in full swing last night. The hometown Boise Hawks, they played the Missoula Paddleheads. The score 4-7 to seven, with the Boise Hawks losing. Some good news though, the game ended with some stunning fireworks. And 4th of July festivities in full swing Monday at Ann Morrison Park. Hundreds came out to enjoy the fireworks celebration. A little bit of river, a little bit of barbecue in the afternoon, mm -hmm. enjoying our friends and family, enjoying the fourth. Little best of both worlds is what I like to call that. Now, if you want to see more pictures of the show, we do have a photo gallery. You can find that on IdahoNews.com. And in Star, a hometown celebration parade was held, one of the largest the city has ever seen. We have been to the, the Star Hometown Parade for quite a few years, and so we were very surprised and very excited about how big and how exciting that it was this year. Yeah, it was a chance for locals to get out and celebrate. All sorts of groups were featured in the parade, including classic cars, people on horseback saying hi, and of course, your classic parade floats. The city also held a fireworks show overnight. And the Independence Day celebrations, they aren't over just yet. In Eagle, the annual Eagle Fun Days takes place this weekend. That's July 8th and 9th. There'll be plenty of activities to choose from. Friday night is Family Fun Night at Gerber Park. At Eagle Island Park, that same night, a fireworks show from 1030 to 11. The next day, Saturday, a fun run, a market, live music, a car show, a parade, and a cornhole tournament, even a Rocky Mountain Oyster feed. Ooh, I don't know if I could do that. Have you ever had Rocky Mountain oysters? No, but I do. I, I love I love regular oysters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and clams and mussels. So yes. I mean, I, I'd, I'd be willing to try them. Yeah, you know, I, I'm willing to try anything. Definitely. I know some people that have had them and really like them. So just interested to yeah. see out there. Not something you see every day. No. But um, also not something you see every day. A Fourth of July that we had in the '80s. Yeah. That was great, by the way, Marcos. Yeah. I mean, and 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 people were you know happy to see that. Yeah, they're oh, like. Yeah. Yeah, we need to keep it this way. I mean, I don't, people don't want to warm back up into those summer 90s uh, temperatures. Well, so. I think you have some news for them with yeah. that because, yeah, July is continuing yeah. to move on. Luckily, though, no triple digit temperatures. That's at least the main takeaway. No, not yet, <laughs> at least, right? I mean, we, <laughs> let's uh, push that off as much as we can. But no, we're going to be getting into the mid 90s uh, uh, throughout. By tomorrow, really, looking at that uh, uh, today, 92, but looking at that out the door forecast, nice mild conditions for this morning. If you're going to be starting out your day right now, uh, expect uh, 70s by 11 a.m., uh, 66 there by 9 a.m., 80s by 1 p.m., and as I said, those uh, 90 degree uh, by this afternoon. Here's a look at some of those current temperatures right now. Meridian there at 64, Caldwell there at 59, and uh, looking at Mountain Home there, 63, and Ontario there at 60. So nice mild conditions for this morning. I'm gonna show you these uh, temperature trends for this uh, for the next couple days. Tuesday there at 91, 95 throughout the rest of the week. So it's gonna be a good week to get out, you know, head to the river, uh, stay hydrated, all that good stuff. Looking at our low temperatures for tonight, Sun Valley there at 56, Boise there at 64, and Ontario there at 62 degrees. And of course, that wildfire risk right now, very high, probably done with those fireworks. So 
But be careful with the burning, the campfires, all that good stuff because our uh, that wildfire risk is uh, fairly high for this time of year. Looking at our future cast, staying may, mostly dry. We may see a shower or two, a couple scattered showers in the mountain region, a shower or two tomorrow afternoon as the system passes our area. But overall, nice 90s temperatures, Sarah. Yeah, actually not bad. I like that we're not getting up into those triple digits. All right, it is 611 on your Tuesday CBS 2 News and Newstalk KBY. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's get a check of what's happening out there from the Newstalk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. Hey, good morning, Ron. Well, good morning. A uh, very good start. Very quiet, as you might expect, this time of the morning. We'll see what goes later, but day following the 4th might make things a little bit lighter than usual. Uh, we're doing uh, great, though, all the way around, whether it's freeways or other routes. Very quiet. Good start. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. Hope you had a good fourth, too. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, NATO accepting some new members. What it means for our alliance with those overseas and the future for the war in Ukraine. Plus, thousands of flights canceled over the holiday weekend. The travel trouble that's keeping people grounded. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. On a busy weekend, Grand Canyon Park Rangers may treat up to three dozen bites from this animal. Not what you'd expect. The answer, squirrels. Yeah, be careful. You try to feed them, you might get nipped out there. Well, now for today's question. You're more likely to do this at 6 o'clock p.m. than any other time during the day. All right, folks, what do you think it is? Here's a look at the weather where you are in Payette today. Partly cloudy conditions with a high of 91. Tonight, partly cloudy, 65. And tomorrow, that mid-90 kicking in with partly cloudy conditions and a high of 95. Thank you, Marcos. Well, it could be the biggest expansion of a U.S. alliance in decades. And it could help deter attacks on the U.S. and other member countries. Now, Amy Kiley reports on what's happening at NATO today and what's happening in Ukraine. That makes it so important. This week, the U.S. is celebrating independence and alliances. Sweden and Finland joining NATO is so important. The potential now accession of Sweden and Finland, which will change the alliance uh, forever. Today, the U.S. and its NATO allies signing what are called accession protocols. Those set up ratification procedures to accept two new member countries. That's a big deal. It sets up possibly the most significant change to the U.S. alliance in decades. Two new NATO allies with formidable military force and capabilities. The timing is important because of Russia's war in Ukraine. I think everyone's very concerned about their the potential for future aggression. Russia has just taken control of much of eastern Ukraine as it continues westward attacks. Russians are shooting over 50 missiles a day, targeting different Ukrainian cities. NATO allies vow to defend each other against foreign attack, so more members means more protection for the U.S. and other member countries. Just yesterday, that strength in numbers was a point of emphasis when a U.S. Army general became NATO's supreme allied commander, Europe. We will march together into a beautiful future of peace and prosperity for all of us. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. God bless you. Well, Russia's war in Ukraine is being blamed for rising prices here in the U.S., but the national average for a gallon of gas, that's actually slowly declining. The national average now sitting at 480 a gallon. Meanwhile, Idaho's average still sitting at 525 a gallon. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up will be either the Maverick Station on South Cloverdale Road in Boise or the Costco Station on Chinded in Meridian. Or you can find it at the Walmart on Overland Road. It lists them all at 518 a gallon. Thousands of flights were canceled across the United States over Fourth of July holiday weekend. The Associated Press reports more than 2,200 flights were either canceled from Thursday to Monday afternoon. Now another 25,000 were delayed during that time. Some delayed were due to weather, others were due to airline staffing issues. 
The TSA says more than 9 million people traveled through the U.S. airports between Thursday and Sunday. And you are looking live at the Boise Airport this morning. If you're planning to fly back home after the 4th of July celebrations this morning, we've got you covered. Here's a look at the BOI flight statuses. Everything is looking good for our departures as well as our arrivals this morning. We will have another update for you coming up in about 45 minutes. Yeah, always good. A reminder, no matter what. I know more people were expected to be out on the roads, but with those closures and, of course, those delays, you want to make sure if you're traveling by air, yeah, yeah you're able to get where you want to go. And if you're flying back into Boise the, this afternoon, you're going to be flying into warmer conditions today. So yeah. uh, nice uh, mid-90s uh, for today, but getting into the mid-90s uh, throughout the rest of the week. So Ooh, nice ridge uh, of high pressure yeah. is what we're talking yes, about, right? Yes, yeah, high pressure nice. coming in and... Uh, bringing in those warm, warmer conditions, more summer-like, right? For yeah, this yeah. Time of year, but Makes you no get triple digits yet, which is good for me. But this is a <laughs> live shot right now. We do have some uh, cloudy conditions out there. Nice smile temperatures this morning. Here's a look at that live shot. Downtown Boise, 63 degrees. Calm winds this morning. Uh, feels like 63 degrees out there. And these are some of our current temperatures right now across the state. 64 there, Meridian, Nampa there at 59. And looking at uh, other areas across the valley right now, Caldwell there, 59. And uh, Stanley there actually at 44 degrees. Glens Ferry there at 63 degrees as well. And I'm going to show you our temperature trends for the next couple days. 91 for today, 95, about mid 90s throughout the rest of the week. So we're going to be getting into more of those uh, summer like conditions, summer like temperatures. Temperature is going to be a good time to get out there, uh, float the river, um, stay hydrated, right? Looking at our future cast, though, dry conditions for the most part. We do, we are going to be seeing some instability, possibility of some uh, isolated showers, thunderstorms in the mountain region. And actually tomorrow afternoon, we may see a sprinkle or two here in the valley as that system passes our area uh, and uh, exits out Thursday morning, bringing those warmer temperatures. So here's what we could expect. Warming up back in the 90s by today, mountain showers, some of that instability, and a quick look at that uh, extended forecast 90s throughout the week, 90 and sunshine for the weekend before we get into the upper 80s on Sunday. But overall, nice summer-like temperatures for this week, Sarah. And full day whitewater rafting trips. Not too bad. Hey. I hear Ron O'Brien there. That means CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing team traffic all morning long. Yeah, let's send it over to him in the News Talk Traffic Center for an update of what's happening down on the roads. Good morning, Ron. Well, good morning. Uh, very quiet looking at uh, Meridian Road. Not much going at the uh, merge point there. You can see the 10 mile merge a little bit in the camera in the upper left hand corner. Very light traffic coming in I 84. Getting ready to get out the door. Not uh, much going on so far. Good start anyway. And that goes for routes away from the freeways. The construction continues. Highway 44, don't forget that area between uh, Highway 16 and Linder. A lot of construction barrels up. Got to be careful there. No early buildup going into that uh, lane restriction, though. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. When you do, get in the car. Make sure you... Car? <laughs> car. Get in the car. All right, get in the car. Make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, a study shedding light on obesity in the U.S. How many kids are overweight compared to kids just 12 years ago? And more on the monkeypox vaccines being sent to the states. Why the rising cases have officials asking for the White House to do more. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. 624 on your Tuesday. Welcome back. A new study suggesting children today are heavier they, than they were in the last decade. Now, researchers say the percentage of kindergartners considered obese, it's jumped. Researchers followed two groups of children. The first started kindergarten in 1998, the second group in 2010. They tracked their height and weight measurements through fifth grade. Now at every age, more children in the 2010 group were considered obese. Well, as cases of the monkeypox virus steadily rise here in the United States, health officials are pushing for more access to testing and vaccines. Now, Mary Maloney shares how the Biden administration is getting vaccines to states with higher case rates. 
More doses of the monkeypox vaccine are being sent to states that are dealing with an influx of the virus. In order to beef up their response and under pressure from the states, the Biden administration is releasing the extra doses of the vaccine from the strategic national stockpile, along with more tests. The current distribution plan has been criticized because of its limited scope, with vaccines only available to those with known exposure. Under the new plan, vaccines and tests will be allocated to states based on case rate, focusing on men who have sex with men and their known partners, along with anyone who thinks they might have been recently exposed through an anonymous partner. The U.S. has confirmed more than 350 cases so far. While experts expect the virus is more widespread than the current case count suggests, they are not calling it crisis yet. I think it would be risky to classify it as low, medium, or high. Given the numbers, I would not say right now at this particular point that it is a, quote, high risk. But the numbers may increase, which means we've just got to be careful and pay attention. Still to come on CBS 2 News, a shooting in California leaves a former Boise State football player dead. What we know about the incident this morning. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. We have a three hour block of FBI ending with FBI Most Wanted at 9. And then you can join Brent Hunsaker, Janae Ryan and Roland Stedham for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. Here it is for you. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. Oh, yep, I see the crash. This morning on CBS 2 News, a suspect in custody after a shooting at a 4th of July celebration. What we know about the nation's 309th mass shooting this year. Plus, a police shooting in Ohio reigniting protests over police's use of force. A look at the damage done in Portland overnight. And a look at last night's 4th of July celebrations here in the Treasure Valley and the festivities to come later this week. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. And good morning. We are going to be seeing a warm up this afternoon. Right now, though, 63 degrees, calm winds out there. Feels like 63 degrees out there. Looking at some current temperatures across the valley right now. 59 Nampa, Ontario there at 60, and Mountain Home at 65. Looking at your uh, morning forecast, temperatures are going to be in the 60s. Nice mild conditions for this morning. Uh, we are going to see some cloud coverage out there, but overall, as I said, warming up throughout the day. Here's a look at our almanac for today. Normal for this time of year, 90 degrees, low 59. We're going to be getting about 91, 92 for today. So uh, a little, a couple degrees above normal. These are some of our high temperatures for today. 91 Caldwell, Emmett there at 92 degrees. Boise 91 and Mountain Home at 92. There's Nampa at 91. So a little bit of what we could expect for the next couple of days. Warming up back in the 90s today. Some instability and of course I'll have more on that later. Thank you, Marcos. It is 631 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing team traffic all morning long. We do have a crash. It is at I-84 near the Eagle off ramp. Keep in mind, it does look right now on our traffic cams like two lanes are down right now. Again, there is a crash at I-84 near the Eagle off ramp. We do just have news of that coming through this morning. We will keep you updated, but two lanes are closed down at this time. Again, um, other than that, it is looking good when you do get in the car. Make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, let's switch gears this morning to what's happening again in um, in Chicago. Police say a person of interest is in custody after Monday's mass shooting at that July 4th parade in the North Chicago suburb. Now at least six people were killed, 30 injured. CBS News correspondent Bradley Blackbird is in Highland Park, Illinois this morning with the latest on the nation's 309th mass shooting of the year. Highland Park police say the gunman opened fire from a rooftop, spraying bullets onto the crowd below as people watched an Independence Day parade. I remember hearing shootings and going like, that's and then reloading and then again, and people screaming and running. All I thought about is just, you know, getting my daughter to safety and I ran with her. 
Close to nine hours later, police took a person of interest, Robert Cremo III, into custody. Officials said his vehicle was spotted and he was stopped after a brief chase. The subject was taken into custody without incident. This individual uh, is believed to have been responsible for what happened. They processed a significant amount of uh, digital evidence today, which uh, helped uh, lead investigators uh, in this direction. Police believe the gunman used a high powered rifle to fire from a spot on top of a commercial building here along the parade route. They say he was very difficult to see. We saw a man with had a shot in his back and saw a man on the floor bleeding and another person shot. This man who brought his five year old son to the parade in this Chicago suburb initially thought the July 4th gunfire was a Navy gun salute until he saw people running and the horror unfolding. You feel like you're just going to get shot when you're running away and it's just horrible to see all that terror. Investigators recovered a firearm at the scene. Authorities say five adults died there. One victim died at the hospital. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, Highland Park, Illinois. Police in Philadelphia are looking for a suspect after two police officers were shot. Now the officers, they were working security for a 4th of July event last night. They were hit just as the fireworks were getting underway. You know what, we don't know. At this point, it's still too early to tell. We don't know if this was a ricochet from celebratory gunfire. We don't know if this was intentional. Uh, we don't know if this was someone taking a shot intentionally at these officers from uh, long range. Um, but again, like I said, uh, I, we're, we're all just extremely grateful that this wasn't worse than what it was. Uh, and all of these officers that you see standing around us, we're, we're on it. And we're not going to rest until we get someone in custody for this. The two officers are in the hospital this morning. One of them hit in the shoulder. The other had a bullet graze his head. Now both do appear to be okay. Well, some sad news to bring you. A former Boise State football player is dead. Four others injured after a shooting outside a Sacramento nightclub. Greg Grimes was 31 years old, a teacher and an assistant football coach. He played defensive line for the Broncos from 09 to 2012. The other victims haven't been identified. Their conditions remain unknown this morning. Now, police are asking eyewitnesses to come forward with any possible leads. In the meantime, head coach Andy Avalos says, quote, I and the entire Boise State football family are saddened to learn about the passing of Greg Grimes. I was fortunate to coach him during his senior season. He was a member of the Brotherhood who has gone way too soon. He will be missed. Well, a curfew in effect overnight in Akron, Ohio, after police released video showing the officer involved shooting. That shooting was of the deadly shooting of 25 year old Jalen Walker. It ignited protests Sunday night. Now, a medical examiner says he had 60 bullet wounds in his body. Walker ran away from a traffic stop and reportedly shot at police during a car chase. Well, dozens of demonstrators gathered in downtown Portland overnight, smashing windows and shooting off mortars into a federal building also burning an American flag. This is all in protest over the death of Jalen Walker in Ohio. It was labeled as a direct action march, the same term used in previous demonstrations that did turn destructive. Now the CBS station in Portland reports a security guard at a downtown hotel was attacked and someone got pepper sprayed. Well, here in the Treasure Valley, let's mix it up. Fourth of July celebrations, they were in full swing last night. The hometown Boise Hawks played the Missoula Paddleheads. The score was 4-7 to seven with the Boise Hawks losing, but there was some good news. The game, it ended with some stunning fireworks. And Fourth of July festivities, full swing at Ann Morrison Park last night. Hundreds of people came out to watch the fireworks celebration. A little bit of river, a little bit of barbecue in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Enjoying our friends and family, enjoying the fourth. If you want to see more pictures of the show, we have a full gallery that's on IdahoNews.com. And in Star, a hometown celebration parade was held, one of the largest the city has ever seen. We haven't been to the, the Star Hometown Parade for quite a few years, and so we were very surprised and very excited about how big and how exciting that it was this year. It was a chance for many locals to get out and celebrate. All sorts of groups were featured in the parade. That does include classic cars, people on horseback, hey there. And of course, your classic parade floats. The city also held a fireworks show overnight. And the Independence Day celebrations aren't over yet. In Eagle, the annual Eagle Fun Days, it takes place this weekend. That's July 8th and 9th. There'll be plenty of activities to choose from. 
Friday night, family night in Gerber Park at Eagle Island Park. That same night, a fireworks show from 1030 to 11. The next day, Saturday, a fun run, a market, live music, a car show, a parade, and a cornhole tournament. Also, a Rocky Mountain oyster feed. A little I bit of think, everything. I still think those uh, <laughs> Rocky Mountain oyster feed sounds pretty Pretty, pretty good. I mean, I mean, we need to try it out. Yeah. I think, I mean, you've got to try it once at least. Uh, yes. I, that's my thing. I've lived in the Rocky Mountains. We've lived in the Rocky Mountains our yes. whole lives. Yes. Yeah, again, we got to get out and try mm -hmm. them. You may check us out at Eagle Days later. Maybe they so. might have like other stuff like shrimp or something. I mean, some other, maybe possibly other, seafood. Other seafood, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a. I love seafood. So. Yeah, no, definitely. And with, well, it's going to get hot again, too. So yeah. yesterday, picture perfect, 4th of July, Marcos. I couldn't have asked for better weather. So now yeah. we're heating up again. Yeah, lots of people uh, enjoying that uh, 80 degree uh, uh, highs last night, you know, but we're in for a change back to more normal like summer uh, conditions for today. I know today we're going to be getting into about 91, 92 degrees. Here's a look at that outdoor forecast for this morning, 66 by 9 a.m., 73 at 11 a.m., and getting into the 80s by 1 p.m. As I said, we are going to be getting into the 90s by this afternoon, folks. Taking a look at our current temperatures right now across the valley, 64 in Meridian, 59 Caldwell, Nampa there at 59 degrees. And overall, nice uh, mild current temperatures for this morning. Looking at those temperature trends for the week, 91 for today. And those mid 90s uh, throughout the week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, even Saturday there at 92. So nice toasty conditions for uh, this week. Looking at some lows for tonight, 64 Boise, Mountain Home there at 60, and Ontario there at 62. So nice mild lows for tonight. Going to talk a little bit about these uh, wildfire risks. Very high right now. Obviously, we're not going to be doing many fireworks, but that burning campfires, make sure you're being cautious of that. We are at a high risk for those wildfires and looking at our future cast nice dry conditions we are going to see a couple systems move through our area may see a sprinkle or two throughout the valley and the mountain regions throughout the next couple days but overall going to be some nice 90 degree summer heat sarah Thank you, Marco. Sounding very nice. It is 640 on your Tuesday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's get a check of what's happening out there from the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. Hey, Ron. Hi there. Uh, still have this accident westbound I-84. Since it's westbound, traffic very light, not backing things up. But uh, pick up towing a uh, trailer. Looks like it hit the center barrier and then skidded across the freeway into the rightmost lanes. A, a semi-tractor there that either stopped to help or may be involved too. So uh, two right lanes blocked between the Eagle exit and the overpass going west and uh, not backing traffic up. Even eastbound traffic's okay in that area. Not really slowing down to look. Uh, just something to be aware of, especially if you'd be headed west here in the next little bit. All is quiet overall elsewhere. We're doing just fine. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. No, oh, thank you, Ron. Important stuff. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And now's the time for the question of the day. The question is, you're more likely to do this at 6 o'clock PM than any other time during the day. Okay, so we already guessed food. I was going to say eating. Maybe maybe cracking open a beer at six o'clock, you know, the, the end of your work day, gym, yeah. hanging out, maybe turn on the TV to start, you some know, decompressing a little bit. Social media. Some people there uh, very big into social media around 6 p.m. Yeah, start posting once you get off work. Crazy to think about since social media kind of goes hand in hand with our job. But some yeah. people have to wait till the end of their day yeah. to be hopping on there. OK, let's see what Barbara says. Taking Ooh. a nap. Yeah, anything to get a cat nap in like during that. the day. <laughs> I like that answer, Barbara, taking a nap. Yep, everybody needs a little shut eye. Ed says walking your dog. Yeah, yep, another good one. As soon as you get home, they're right yep. there at the door saying, hey, we're ready to go right back out. Yep. Got to take that four legged friend out. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. And Matthew says be stuck in traffic. Yeah, if you yeah. commute from Boise down to the lower Treasure Valley, you know what we're talking about. It's a okay. good hour wait. <laughs> it's a good hour <laughs> wait. Yeah, it is. Ah, oh, traffic. Don't get me started. All right. Well, if you think you know the answer, you can share your guesses on Facebook or Twitter. Again, we'll reveal the answer at the end of the show, right before CBS This Morning. And still to come on CBS 2 News, firefighters gaining control of several blazes across the state. A look at how fire season is now progressing.
Here's a look at that outdoor forecast in Ontario for today. Partly cloudy conditions, high of 92. Tonight, partly cloudy, high of 65. And then tomorrow, that warmer weather kicking in, partly cloudy conditions with a high of 95. Sarah? Thank you, Marcos. It is 645 on your Tuesday fire season. The Willow Fire, the Willow Creek Fire, rather, burning in eastern Oregon. It's now 90% contained. The fires burned more than 40,000 acres near Vale, Oregon. The good news, though, no homes or buildings have been damaged. And this morning, the Talon Fire is fully contained. This is the fire that was burning near the Birds of Prey Center, just southeast of Boise yesterday. That fire grew to about 60 acres, but thanks to the quick work of fire crews, it was quickly contained. Today, crews are mopping up. The cause is currently under investigation. A large fire burning in California. It's happening about 50 miles southeast of Sacramento. It's been dubbed the Electra Fire. It's now spread nearly 1,000 acres as of yesterday evening. It has 0% containment with evacuations now underway. Melanie Wingo has more. The Electra Fire burning in rural Amador County. Threatening homes, fire crews spent the afternoon working nonstop to protect. Helicopters filling up in nearby bodies of water. Swooping toward the flames, making drop after drop, working to stop the fire from progressing. Wind gusts kicking up the flames, causing them to move up canyon slopes. From this vantage point on top of a canyon, we're seeing why there's so much smoke in the sky. The fire down below is burning in thick vegetation. There's just so much dry fuel to burn. Utility crews doing what they can to prepare for the fire to sweep through. Engines on the ground standing by to protect homes at the top of the canyon from those oncoming flames. This happens almost every year here, <laughs> so it's, it's tradition. People who live in the fire's path forced to evacuate, but confident in the fire crews working to save their homes. At first, it's a little scary, um, but firefighters seem, you know, like they're doing pretty good at it. Uh, they saved our house multiple times now, so I have faith in them. Well, as of this morning, it is unclear how many structures have been impacted by that fire. Yeah, bone dry conditions out there. One of the things, actually some amazing video that we saw out there, some of those aircrafts, again, tendering water yeah. to the fire. One of the coolest experiences I ever had was rafting riggins and being able to see some of those helicopters come down near us while, you know, while you're Pick in the water, the water floating along yeah. and just picking up that water and taking it up to the mountain. So such a cool I, sight. Yeah, yeah, I commend them with their work. It is not an easy one. Very hard. Yeah, yeah. we definitely want to yeah, help them out as much as we can. I know last night, the good news, only at least one fire sparked that's still under investigation, yes. but cooler temperatures yesterday. Now we start to heat on up. Yeah, you know, nice uh, switch from that nice 80 degree heat. You know, it seems like everybody likes that 80. Oh, nice, yeah. 80 is like a perfect. happy medium, right? But no, back into the uh, 90s for today, folks, and then uh, mid 90s for the rest of the week. So going to be a good week to kind of get out there and have some, uh, you know, float the river kind of, you know, do, do those fun outdoor activities. We do have some cloudy conditions this morning. This is a live shot right now, 63 degrees. Calm winds out there, but overall nice mild conditions for this morning. Here's a look at some of those current temperatures across the valley. Meridian there at 64, Caldwell 59 degrees. And looking at other parts across the uh, valley, 63 Mountain Home, Ontario there at 60 and Caldwell at 59 degrees. Going to show you our uh, temperature trends. As I said, 91 for today, reaching those mid 90s, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, getting into the lower 90s on Saturday. So it's going to be a nice warm week and going to stay fairly dry. Looking at our, at our future cast right now, we may see a shower or two uh, in the mountain region, scattered shower, uh, thunderstorm, but um, we are going to see some instability, so we may even see a shower here in the valley as well. But overall, nice warm conditions uh, throughout the week. So here's what we could expect. Warming up, 90s for today, mountain showers, and some of that instability causing uh, that uh, rain to in the mountains. So 94 for tomorrow, some more warm weather on Thursday, 93 Friday, staying in the 90s throughout the weekend before we get into the upper 80s by Sunday. Nice sunny conditions, nice summer-like weather, Sarah. So I know I'll be out on the river this week. So I don't know about you, Sarah, but... 
Finding ways to cool down. Yeah. That really is the name of the game when we get into those mid 90s. Happy not to see those triple digits, though. It is 650 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's head back out to Ron O'Brien. He has a check of that crash over near the Eagle off ramp. Yeah, westbound 84 crash, uh, two right lanes blocked a little bit beyond the Eagle exit in that curve 84. Uh, traffic heavy and up a little bit westbound, not really backing traffic up per se, but a little bit of a slowdown going past that spot. And you should uh, slow it down, of course, to be safe. Uh, looks like eastbound's doing just fine. A lot of times we'll get free, uh, slowing on the other side of the freeway across from an accident as people take a look. But that has not been the case. Eastbound traffic holding up okay. Elsewhere, quiet start this morning. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Boyan. Thank you so much, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News, celebrating more than the 4th of July. A look at the festivities underway to celebrate the 100th birthday of this World War II vet. And here's a look at our chime in photo of the day. This is from Jesus. Looks like fun out there at Whitewater Park. Makes you want to just dive right on in. Now, thanks for sharing with us. To submit your photos, you can head to idahonews.com slash chime in. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. Across the U.S., Americans shot off fireworks to celebrate the 4th of July. Here's a look at some of the celebrations in Vegas. Now, Caesars Palace kicked off the Las Vegas 4th of July fireworks of 2022. Now, it's in the heart of the Strip this year. Nearly everyone on the Vegas Boulevard was able to see the show. Well, some in Tulsa, Oklahoma are celebrating a bit more than just Independence Day. Three generations of family members got to celebrate the 100th birthday of a World War II veteran. Now, Amy Slonchik tells us, lets us in on these festivities. Clyde Julian Case has shared his birthday with America for a full century, seeing 18 presidents in his lifetime and today surrounded by three generations of his family. <laughs> Today is a huge celebration of 100 years of life. Born on the 4th of July, it's time to celebrate Clyde Case. Typically, we would have a 4th of July red with the sparklers and all that, but this is just a wonderful uh, tribute to his 100 years. <laughs> For just about five of those years, Clyde served in World War II. His daughter, Suzanne, recalls the war stories he told over the years, how he joined the Army Air Corps in 1941 before Pearl Harbor. He served in England and the Panama Canal Zone, finishing his service in 1945 as a top turret gunner on the B-24. These are his goggles and his flight helmet and his military hat treasures. We will treasure those. While his past was on display at his birthday party, Mr. Case, I want to give you this. Family and friends got to make new memories. As Clyde opened cards, reading notes from family and friends, and unwrapped presents. <gasps> Look at that. Home of the brave. But perhaps the greatest gift. You are a big baby was meeting his great-granddaughter, Halston Julian, for the first time. His youngest great-grandchild. Mom Melissa and Dad Julian welcomed Halston into the world just three weeks ago. Now she'll carry on her great-grandfather's middle name. It's just amazing that they could have that moment, you know. Those pictures will be something that she doesn't realize but will cherish forever. Happy birthday! He's going strong and um, we're celebrating that. Three generations together, celebrating the greatest one of all. And many more. Yeah, happy 100th to Clyde. All right, now it's time for our question of the day. That question, you're more likely to do this at 6 o'clock than any other time during the day. The answer? Order food for delivery. Oh, so Keep so it we easy. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I hope you go easy on yourself today. We'll see you back here at 11. Take the news with you on the radio, News Talk KBOI, and for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Mornings is coming up next.
and watch for your next local newscast on CBS2 today at 11. Connect with CBS2 for local news and weather on IdahoNews.com.